today I will be ranking every single tallest building in each US state. I have 50 buildings on this tier list so this is going to be a pretty long video. I will be ranking them based on how good they look and I will be starting off from the shortest buildings all the way to the tallest buildings. I'm pretty sure all of you know how this tier list is going to go, S tier being the absolute best and F tier being the worst. So without further ado, let's begin. In very last place at rank 50, we got Vermont with the Decker Towers in Burlington. Standing at a height of 124 feet with 11 stories, it is the tallest building in Vermont and it's also the shortest building out of all of the 50 states. I think this building looks very uh, plain and boring. It's just, it's it's dog shit. It's a dog shit building. It's just, there's nothing much going on here on the exterior. It just looks like any other apartment complex ever apparently this building is plagued with crime our camera captured this needle in a stairwell and residents sent us these pictures of more needles and bloodstains don't move here please if you're homeless find somewhere else to go this is not a safe building at this time yeah i wouldn't want to live inside of that building but um yeah, Decker Towers in Vermont is getting an F tier. I'm, I'm sorry, Vermont, but you have a really shitty building. Do better next time. In rank 49, standing at 148 feet, is the Financial Center in Wyoming, Cheyenne. The state that does not exist. I swear to God, I have never talked to someone or seen a person from Wyoming. But anyways, I think this is an okay looking building. It's definitely better than Vermont. I think the design is interesting. I like how the glass is divided up and has these exterior walls between them. Also, apparently Laramie County is planning to spend $8.8 .8 million on the financial center. I tried reading the article about it, but it told me to sign up for their shitty news site, so yeah, I didn't get to read it. But I'm interested in seeing what this building will look like in the future. Overall, it's not really that special. A very mid-looking building. Wyoming you're going to get a D tier. In 48th place, we have South Dakota with the Century Link Tower standing at 174 feet located in Sioux Falls. This is a very interesting looking building. I like the granite on the exterior and the glass. The base of the building has this like cool little circle design. Um, I searched up the building on Google and I found someone made a Lego build of this. I think that's pretty cool, but uh, yeah, n nothing really much to say here, just a very average looking office building, so South Dakota is getting a C tier. Rank 47, we got Maine with the St. Joseph's Church in Bidford. At 235 feet, this is a pretty good building. I like the spire and those little details and the window. Uh, the interior of the church is kind of basic, but it's pretty. I don't know. I, I just have a thing for these cathedral looking churches. Um, kind of concerns me that Maine's peak was in the 1870s and they just never built anything taller afterwards. Overall, Maine is getting a B tier. Rank 46 is North Dakota with the state capital in Bismarck at 242 feet. The old state capital was built in the 1880s but then it caught on fire in 1930. If this state capital still existed it probably would have been an A or S tier. It's a very elegant looking building but it was replaced by this state capital which is eh, basic, mid, nothing too much going on here. It's just a very plain Art Deco building. Uh, the interior is fine, I guess. The state capitol building only costed $2 million to build in 1931, and the construction workers were paid $0.30 cents an hour, which if you put that in today's money, that is $5.89. That pay is horrendously bad, oh my god. But I mean, this was built during the Great Depression, so I guess that makes sense. But yeah, North Dakota, you have a basic plain building. It's going in C tier. Number 45 is the first interstate center in Billings, Montana, coming in at 272 feet. I'm sorry, Montana, but you have a plain ass, boring office building from the 80s. The interior is okay, but overall, Montana, you're getting a D tier. 
Number 44 is New Hampshire with the City Hall Plaza in Manchester at 275 feet. This is a very interesting building and it looks kind of good. I, I like the setbacks on this building and I like how some parts are whitish tan. The copper roof looks nice and the lobby isn't too bad. Overall New Hampshire you have a very interesting building so you're going to get a B tier. Rank 43 is West Virginia with the state capital in Charleston standing at 293 feet. I was not expecting West Virginia going so hard on their state capital <laughs> building because god damn that is beautiful. That is definitely way better than North Dakota's shitty state capital. I really like that golden dome. The columns and the details look so good. The location couldn't be any better as the capital is right in front of a river and it just, it just looks so good from there. The top of the building lighting up at night looks so pretty and the interior of this building, oh my lord. I really like the marble in the ceiling. The dome inside looks so good. But yeah, West Virginia really caught me off guard, but you're getting an S tier. Good job, West Virginia. Rank 42 is Alaska with the ConocoPhillips building in Anchorage, standing at 296 feet. Uh, okay, here we go again, back to the boring office buildings. Alaska, what is this? You can do better than this. This is a plain boring building. The building also has a skylight atrium that is open to the public and it has a small food court and a water fountain. I, I guess that's cool, but it, yeah, it doesn't really change my opinion on this boring building. Alaska is getting a D tier. 41th place we have Idaho with the Zions Bank HQ and Bozy coming in at 323 feet. Now, I like this building. It's very nice. I like the separating between the this white facade and this entirely glass facade. I like the, the fake balconies that are on this building. I also like the setbacks on the top of the building. And it has this cute little spire on top. The base of the building looks good, the lobby is very modern and clean, and there's also a couple of restaurants and a gym. Idaho, you have a very good looking building, so I, I think it deserves to go in the A tier. In 40th place is Mississippi with the Bow Rivage Hotel Casino in Biloxi, standing at 347 feet. You know what they say, 99% of gamblers quit before they win big. At the time this casino opened in 1999, it was the largest casino slash hotel building outside of Nevada. It looks okay, you know, not too bad, it looks like any other casino in Las Vegas. It has a pool, which is cool, and it has some restaurants and the rooms don't look too bad. Overall, it's a pretty decent building, although the area around the casino doesn't look too great. There's just empty plots everywhere and uh... I, I really wonder why. Mississippi, you're going to get a B tier. In rank 39 is South Carolina with the Capitol Center in Columbia at a height of 349 feet. Ugh, okay, it's another one of these boring box Minecraft looking buildings. Um, I, I think it's a piece of shit. Very boring on the outside and I was going to put this in the F tier until I saw the lobby of the building, which the lobby looks okay and modern, which is why South Carolina is getting a D tier instead of an F. South Carolina is like the less cooler brother of North Carolina and the North has a way better looking building, which we are going to get to that later on. In rank 38 is Albuquerque Plaza in New Mexico, Albuquerque, standing at 351 feet. <laughs> New Mexico, that, that sounds very familiar. Walter, put your dick away, Walter. I'm not having sex. This building doesn't look too bad. I like the little setbacks and I like the pyramid roof on top. Um, nothing much to say here. Overall, New Mexico, you're getting a C tier. Thirty seventh place, we are heading to Delaware with twelve oh one North Market Street in Wilmington, standing at three hundred and sixty feet. For a building that was built in the eighties with this international style design, it looks pretty good. The setbacks are nice. I like this cylinder glass design that adds a lot of depth to this tower. Um, yeah, um, nothing much to say here. D Delaware is getting a beat here. 
Next up in 36th place, we have Kansas with the Epic Center in Wichita standing at 385 feet. <laughs> I, I just like how this tower is called the Epic Center, even though it doesn't really look too epic. It should be renamed to the Mediocre Center instead. The original plan was to build two twin towers, but it was later scrapped to just make one tower because of fear it will never reach full capacity. And this led to a local joke called the Epic Off Center. That's pretty funny. The diamond roof on top looks okay, but besides that, the tower looks kinda plain, unseasoned. Kinda reminds me of that one Chicago building. Kansas is going in the C tier. Rank 35 is Utah with the Wills Fargo Center in Salt Lake City standing at 422 feet. This is a very sleek and modern design. I like how there's a ton of setbacks at the base of the tower. I like that slight dent in the front. The back of the tower is very sleek. I also like this cool looking futuristic bridge that's connected to the parking garage. The Wells Fargo Center will not be the tallest building in Utah for long as there's another building to the right that's under construction that will be 28 feet taller and it's set to complete by the end of 2024. Pretty cool stuff Utah. Anyways, Utah will be getting the B tier. In rank 34 we have Rhode Island with the Industrial National Bank building standing at 428 feet. Despite being the small state in the US and the state with the worst roads in the country despite the name being Rhode Island, the tallest building there looks really good. The building is nicknamed the Superman building because it looks similar to the headquarters of the Daily Planet which I can kinda see the resemblance. Sadly, the building has been vacant since 2013 when Bank of America moved out and it would cost an estimated $115 million to rehabilitate the building. In 2023, High Rock Westminster announced a plan to restore the building and phase one of the project will cost $25 million and it estimated that the construction would take around 6 to 9 months. I'm glad that this building is being restored because it is such a beautiful art deco building. That limestone and the small little details on some of the rooftops is just amazing. I especially like that beacon that is on the very top of the tower. The lobby is very fancy, reminds me of that one GTA 5 bank. And I feel like it's just such an icon of Rhode Island that this building needs to be preserved and I really hope it does not get demolished in the future. But overall, Rhode Island will be getting the S tier. Good job, Rhode Island. Next up on the list, we have Hawaii in rank 33 with the Central Ala Mona at 435 feet. Wasn't really expecting Hawaii here to have a pretty tall skyscraper. The tower looks very basic. It, it just looks like any other Miami skyscraper ever, where they have a shit ton of balconies on the exterior. Not really a big fan of those type of buildings. The lobby is cool and the apartments inside looks nice, I wouldn't mind living inside this tower. It even has a pool so that's cool but the building itself is just basic. And the Honolulu skyline looks copy and pasted with these balcony skyscrapers. Overall Hawaii will be getting the C tier. Number 32 we got the Chase Tower in Phoenix, Arizona at 483 feet. Well, it's no longer really called the Chase Tower as Chase moved out of the building back in 2021 and left it completely vacant and the Chase sign had been removed. But there are going to be some planned renovations to this building that will be mixed use, so interested in seeing how this building will look like in the future. Also in 2023, a man climbed on top of the building with no safety gear at all and he reached the very top of the roof and he did this to protest about pro-life and he also calls himself the pro-life spider-man listen this is a fucking family friendly youtube channel and i will not be discussing about my political beliefs if you think he's in the right or wrong then okay i don't care but yeah this building has an interesting blueprint where it looks like there's three different towers that are mashed up together there's also this huge concrete thing attached to the tower it's a decent building nothing too crazy but the shape of it is interesting but arizona will be getting the c tier next up in rank 31 is virginia with the western virginia beach town center standing at 508 feet 
Virginia kind of disappointed me here. I was thinking Virginia would have a cooler skyscraper. I mean, even Virginia's drug addict brother, West Virginia, has a better building than them. And you know you're in America when you have a big ass six story parking lot at the base of the tower and a giant eight lane road next to it and a huge shopping mall in front of the tower. This is probably the most American patriotic building I have ever seen on this tier list. But yeah, this tower looks okay, the huge parking lot at the base is questionable, but you got some balconies out here and a pyramid roof on top with a spire. And I like how it lights up at night. The lobby looks very comfy. It's a very average skyscraper, so I will be putting Virginia in the C tier. Coming in at rank 30, we will be heading to Baltimore, Maryland with 100 Light Street, standing at 529 feet. Oh my god, Maryland didn't even try at all. They just built a big square building and called it a day. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Maryland, what the hell is this? You can do so much better than this. Baltimore has some great interesting buildings like this tower here called 10 Light Street, which used to be the state's tallest. If this building was still the tallest, it would be getting the S tier, but no. No, Maryland decides to build this big ugly piece of shit, but yeah, Maryland has fallen off really hard, so I'll be giving them the F tier because I'm just, I'm so tired of seeing these cube office buildings with no personality to them. I'm sorry Maryland, but you have such a bad building. At 29 is the city place in Hartford, Connecticut, coming in at 535 feet. It's a better building than Maryland, but not by much. The building has this strange rigid facade, the roof I guess is nice, but yeah, it's just kind of unseasoned and plain, so Connecticut will be getting the D tier. And 28 is the Simons Tower in Little Rock, Arkansas at 500... <laughs> Arkansas. Why is this one Kansas, but this one is not Arkansas? America, explain! Arkansas at 546 feet. The staircase design adds a little bit of depth to this tower which is nice but there's a quite a few setbacks at the base but yeah it, at least it didn't go with a boring square building so I will be giving Arkansas Jesus Christ Arkansas in the C tier. I'm sorry. 27 we are heading to Oregon with the Wills Fargo Center in Portland at 546 feet. At least Oregon put a little bit of love and care into this square building unlike other states. I like the mixture of this black tinted glass with the white facade and how the facade bulges more than the glass. I like how this tower sags at the base. The lobby is nice. I like the stripped oak wood here and you have a little bakery in the lobby. It's very comfy but yeah, Oregon, at least you put some effort into your square building, so it will be getting the C tier. 26 is Kentucky with 400 West Market Street in Louisville, standing at 549 feet. Man, Kentucky is really going hard on this building right here. That is fucking beautiful. Especially for a tower that was built in the 90s with this Neo Art Deco design is just so pretty. You have this very 1930s looking building with this octagon shape at the top and this beautiful dome. The dome lighting up at night looks so cool. And the lobby, oh my god, Kentucky really went all out with this tower. I really like the floor of the tower and that black marble is very cool. I like whatever this thing is called, but man, Kentucky really coming in here hot in the tier list, but you are getting the S tier. Good job, Kentucky. And 25 is Wisconsin with the U.S. Bank Center in Milwaukee standing at 601 feet. Another boring rectangle building. That triangle design that is on the top of the building and in the middle and at the base adds a bit of depth, I guess. It's just very disappointing to see because Milwaukee genuinely has some pretty badass and architectural masterpieces. But this, as their tallest building, is just very mediocre it's such a bland building but at least it's slightly better than maryland so i'll be giving wisconsin the d tier 
24 is the AT&T building in Nashville, Tennessee, standing at 617 feet. This is a very unusual and unique building at the same time. People in Nashville call it the Batman building. Oh, okay, I can see the resemblance now. The building is at an angle and has these two giant spires, which is kind of cheating with the height, but at least it looks cool. I like the slanted glass roof on top and that arched roof and those setbacks. The tower has a winter atrium inside, which is kind of cool. Very 90s looking. Tennessee has some pretty unusual and strange buildings, like in Memphis, they have a giant Bass and Pro Shops pyramid. <laughs> what the fuck? But Tennessee here is kind of killing it with the Batman building. I like it. It's very unique and strange, so I'll be giving it the A tier. Good job, Tennessee. Coming in at 23, we are heading to Missouri with One Kansas City Place in Kansas City, standing at 624 feet. One Kansas Place was supposed to be part of a big project called Kansas City Place that would consist of eight buildings, but only two of them were ever built. One Kansas was supposed to be the third tallest in the project. The reason why the project failed was because a lot of residents complained that it will ruin the Kansas City skyline, which is just a shame because the proposed skyscrapers actually look good. But, oh well. This tower looks okay with that dark blue glass on the facade, just a typical 80s building. The setbacks on the top are a good touch. Overall, Missouri will be getting the B tier. Next up in rank 22 is Iowa with 801 Grand and Des Moines at 630 feet. Looks like the taller and skinnier version of Albuquerque Plaza. I really like the shape of the roof. I like the triangle designs that are all over this building. It's very cool. I like the lighting on this tower at night. Not too shabby overall, but Iowa is getting the B tier. In 21 is Nebraska with the first national bank tower in Omaha, standing at 634 feet tall. Wasn't expecting Nebraska here to have a tall building in the middle of nowhere. The international style kinda goes hard here and I like it. It's so simple but yet so cool. And when it lights up at night, ooh, that, that goes so hard. Although that building isn't going to be the tallest for long as Omaha is building a new skyscraper that will stand 677 feet. Overall, Nebraska, you're getting the B tier. In rank 20 is Louisiana with the Hancock Whitney Center in New Orleans, standing at 697 feet. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like, F tier. I don't have to explain. You can probably guess why, but it's an F tier. Number 19 is Indiana with the Salesforce Tower in Indianapolis standing at 701 feet. Looks like a giant cockroach, and I mean that as a compliment. I like the two big spires on top and that blocky pyramid roof. The corners have these ridges. It's very nice. Not too bad, Indiana, so I'll be giving you the B tier. Number 18 is Colorado Denver with the Republic Plaza standing at 714 feet. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like, Holy shit. Did Colorado copy Louisiana? Because these two buildings look the exact same. And apparently they are designed by the same architecture firm. Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. It's like Colorado went up to Louisiana and said, Hey bro, can I copy your homework? Yeah, sure, but make it a bit taller. And did just that. Overall, it's a dog shit building, so Colorado will be getting the F tier. In 17 is Detroit, Michigan with the Renaissance Center standing at 727 feet. Ah yes, everyone's favorite Rust Belt city, Detroit. Anyways, this building has a huge plaza, one of the biggest in the world. It consists of these seven identical skyscrapers all under one roof. The lobby is pretty big and it's like a museum where you have all of these cars built by General Motors. The winter atrium is massive. The cylinder building itself is decent. I like the RGB LED lights on top of each building. But yeah, Michigan is getting the... What the fuck? Who stole my tier list? Oh my... Oh my god. Okay, I, I cannot have shit in Detroit. Alright, give me one second. Okay, I got my tier list back, so as I was saying, Michigan is getting the C tier. 
16 is the Fountain Blue Las Vegas in Nevada, standing at 735 feet. In Wikipedia, it says the building is from the city Winchester, but it's really from Las Vegas because I believe no one ever calls it Paradise or Winchester, even though the majority of the strip is not even in Las Vegas. The Fountain Blue has some very interesting backstory to it. Construction began in 2007 and it was set to open in the fall of 2009. But, as you can expect, the 2008 financial crisis hit and the project remained unfinished since 2009. And then there were all these different lawsuits, Fountain Blue filing for bankruptcy and just this huge clusterfuck of a mess. During the years it was abandoned, there were missing glass panes that fell off or shattered. A lot of the building remained unfinished and began rusting. And overall, it was just an eyesore in Las Vegas. The resort has been bought and sold by a couple of developers over the years, and in 2021, it was bought back by a new company called Fountain Blue Development, and construction, once again, began. The resort was finished and opened on New Year's Eve 2023. Finally completed after, what, 16 years? We got Fountain Blue completed before GTA 6, but man, imagine your state's tallest building just sitting there collecting dust for 12 years. The building is very mediocre, it's just very bland on the exterior, but at least there's a pool at the base. The interior is cool, I guess. I mean, 99% of gamblers quit before they win big, but yeah, Nevada is getting the seats here. And 15 is the RSA Battlehouse in Alabama Mobile, standing at 745 feet. That was very unnecessary for Alabama to call this the Battlehouse, like that name kind of goes hard. It's a good tower, I like the crown on top, it reminds me of the Chrysler building in New York. And it looks so cool when it lights up at night. Overall Alabama, not a bad building at all, so you'll be getting the B tier. Coming in at 14 is Boston, Massachusetts with the John Hancock Tower standing at 790 feet. This building is known for so many architectural flaws such as windows falling off, people on upper floors experiencing motion sickness, and the building damaging sidewalks, utility lines, and nearby buildings. It's a horrible thought out of a skyscraper. It also looks like a giant PlayStation 4. Wait a second. Did Sony copy the John Hancock Tower in Boston? You know, I'm starting to form a little bit of a conspiracy theory here, but that tower was built in 1976. The PS4 was not released until 2013. And the tower is blue, isn't that like PlayStation's 4 theme color? You know, I may have just found the disturbing truth behind PlayStation, but they definitely did copy that building, no doubt. But anyways, it's a mid-building, nothing too special, it's kind of boring, so we'll be getting the D tier. And 13 is the IDS Center in Minnesota! In Minneapolis, standing at 792 feet. The building would also have structural failures with water leaking through the roof after rain or snow because of Minnesota's extreme freeze-thaw cycle. Ice would also fall from the tower onto the glass roof of Crystal Court often breaking through. Man, what the fuck are with these towers with structural problems, oh my god. But yeah, it's an okay looking tower, it looks like the modern version of MetLife Tower in New York. It's kinda plain, but the black roof adds a bit of depth, I guess, and on the 50th floor it has a very nice ballroom. Pretty cool, but yeah, Minnesota is getting the C tier. In 12th place is Oklahoma with the Devon Energy Center in Oklahoma City, standing at 850 feet. Do you remember the pro-life Spider-Man? Well, in 2022, he climbed on top of the building and he reached the roof and then he was arrested for trespassing. Yeah, I, I don't know how climbing on top of towers is protesting, but whatever. The tower looks pretty cool, very sleek and modern design. I like that upside down triangle thing that's on top of the tower. The inside looks very futuristic and clean. Also, a new skyscraper had just been proposed called the Legends Tower that will stand 1,907 feet tall and would be the tallest building in the US. Who knows if the tower actually gets built, I kinda doubt it would, but anyways, Oklahoma will be getting the B tier. 
In 11th place, we got Florida with a panorama tower in Miami standing at 868 feet. Looks like any other building in Miami where they have the same copy and pasted balcony skyscrapers everywhere. Not a fan of these type of buildings at all, so Florida is getting the D tier. In 10th place is North Carolina with the Bank of America Tower in Charlotte, standing at 871 feet tall. That's a way better tower than South Carolina's Minecraft ass looking building. My god, this is such a beauty. I like the setbacks, I really like the roof with these spikes on top, and when it lights up at night, it looks so cool. North Carolina is coming in here hot, but it deserves to be in the A tier, definitely. In ninth place is New Jersey with 99 Hudson Street in Jersey City, standing at 900 feet tall. You know, as a person who lives in the beautiful state called New York, I do have my biases against New Jersey. I would much rather live in the Bronx than live in fucking New Jersey. But I'll admit, they have a pretty good tallest building there. I really like the limestone looking facade and this entirely glass facade here. I like how it's shaped like a V and the base of the tower looks really cool. And it even has its own pool. I mean, come on, you know, as much as I hate New Jersey, it's a good building so it will be getting the B tier. In number 7 we have Columbia Center in Seattle, Washington coming in at 933 feet tall. This building is very big, and black, and cool, I guess. Looks like some shit you would see in Gotham City, but yeah, the, the shape of the tower looks cool. It even has its own observatory, so that's nice. Overall, Washington will be getting the B tier. In number 7, we have the Key Tower in Cleveland, Ohio, standing at 947 feet tall. I like this tower, I like the roof on top and the lighting at night, the setbacks are cool and I like the sort of art deco 1930s feeling to it. And it even has a giant key on top, that's pretty funny. Overall Ohio is getting the B tier. And now we have reached the 1000 feet mark and we are heading to Texas with the JP Morgan Chase Tower in Houston, standing at 1002 feet. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like, you, you know what they say. Everything is bigger in Texas. Even the big, boring, no personality skyscrapers. Really, Texas? Really? You literally have a 1,000 foot skyscraper and this is the best you can do? Are you kidding me? It's so gray and ugly and the back of the building is so unseasoned and sad. And Texas really thought they did something when they added this dent in front of the tower. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised as the Houston skyline has some very bland and plain ass skyscrapers. So Texas, you have disappointed me today but you're getting the F tier. You have a dog shit skyscraper, I'm sorry. And number 5 is Georgia with the Bank of America Plaza in Atlanta standing at 1023 feet. Oh my god, that shit goes hard, I, I love it. Especially for a building that only took 14 months to build, I can see Georgia putting the effort into this building. It's beautiful, I really like the brownish color and those setbacks are nice, and that skeleton roof on top is pretty and I like how it lights up at night. It looks like a giant torch. But yeah, I definitely do think that the Bank of America Plaza is the next one out of Atlanta, so Georgia will be getting the S tier. Good job, Georgia. And number four is California with the Wilshire Grant Center in Los Angeles, standing at 1,100 feet. Even though it's cheating with that huge toothpick on top, it's still a pretty cool skyscraper. I like that shiny blue stained glass and that exposed steel beams here. The design really goes hard here and I, I love it. I like how in the middle it lights up with different colors at night. I like that huge Pepsi logo that's up there. It also has this huge TV at the base of the tower. Overall, California, pretty cool skyscraper, but I still think the Maze Bank Tower- <laughs> I, I, I mean the, the US Bank Tower is still the tallest in the city. California is getting the S tier. Good job, California. And now for the top three, we have Pennsylvania with the Comcast Techno- Comcast? Comcast! 
Technology Center in Philadelphia standing at 1,121 feet. I like the exposed steel beams that are all over this tower. It has this industrial look to it and I like it. I like those zigzags that are on the tower. I like the, the green roofs on the building and it also has this huge stick sticking out of it like the Wilshire Grand in California. Overall, I like the modern industrial design so Pennsylvania is getting the S tier. Good job, Pennsylvania. For number 2, we got Illinois with the Chicago Sears Tower standing at 1,451 feet. I'm just going to call it the Sears Tower since I know people from Chicago don't like the name Willis Tower. But man, this building is absolutely massive and it was actually once the tallest building in the world when it was built back in 1974 and it held the title for two decades. The tower uses this bundle tube design. It also has this observatory on top with the glass box sticking out of it where you can look down and that's pretty cool. Also in 2020, the building lost power due to heavy rains that flooded three basement levels. The Sears Tower without power looks like the fucking Endermen from Minecraft. But anyways, I like the international style here and the shape of it is really cool so I'll be putting Illinois in the A tier. Oh god, I probably just pissed off some Chicagoans out there, fuck. And now, for our number one spot, the tallest building in the US and in the Western Hemisphere is... New York, my home state, with a one World trade center standing at 1776 feet tall. Wow, 1776, that's, that's very patriotic, man. Construction started five years after the original World Trade Center was destroyed on 9-11 and it took eight years to complete and it's also one of the most expensive buildings costing 3.9 billion dollars. It also has this cool elevator going up to the observatory where it shows New York over the years from the 1500s to 2015. And the views up in the observatory is so cool. Also at the base of the tower they have this LED display which looks immaculate. I have seen this building before in person and it's just an amazing tower. I love that shiny blue facade and that triangle design on each side and it fits so well into the New York skyline. It's like a massive middle finger to Al Qaeda. And since I am from New York I am going to be very biased and put this into the S tier. Good job, New York. Anyways, here's my complete tier list with each tallest building in all of the 50 states. I feel like I put way too many buildings on the B and C tier, but a lot of the buildings here are decent and mediocre. And here's a map of the US, so the more blue the states are, the cooler the buildings are, and the less blue it is, the uglier the buildings are. But um... Uh, yeah, that's all for this tier list video. This has taken a very long time to make. I spent well over a week working on it. And it's probably the most effort I've put into a video, so I really hope you enjoy this. This video has been kind of fun to make, but it's also been a pain in the ass to edit. If you enjoy these tier list videos, and please let me know. Um, if you're new around here, I don't really recommend you subscribe to me. I mean, if you want to, then okay. I upload the most random shit, like one day I could be uploading a Minecraft shit post, and then the other day I could be uploading a lost media video, so I, I don't stick to one niche because I'm just like seeing what I like and doing different videos. My upload schedule is really bad, like I could upload a video in like 3 days or 1 week or 2 weeks, so uh, yeah, it's, it's just all over the place and depends on how busy I am in school or just having no idea what to make, um, I, I don't fucking know man, I just upload whatever I like, but uh, yeah, that, that's all I have for today, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll see ya.